Welcome back to 30 Days to Learn Photoshop. This is day 17, the type tool. My name's Ben Gribbin, and in today's lesson, we are going to learn how to create text and how to work with text in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and we'll create a new document so we can demo some of the text settings and features. So the text tool is selected by pressing T for text, and there are a couple of different ones. There's the horizontal type tool there's the vertical type tool and then there's the horizontal and vertical type mask tools we're going to talk about the horizontal and vertical type tools now you will see when you select these tools you have the ability to change the cursor to this text cursor and clicking onto the layer or anywhere on the document will create a text layer just clicking once in a single place will create a text layer that you are able to keep typing and this layer will drop down when you press enter you can actually manually enter in text on new lines and it's sort of never ending text tool whereas if you click and drag keeping your mouse down you create a paragraph box so on a paragraph box if you keep typing it's restrained within this box so it's somewhat like a text box in Microsoft Word or pages so you can see the difference between those two options for the text tool well you've got the font face or typeface here so you select a new typeface you can set the style the size the anti-aliasing let's just show you what anti-aliasing is if you don't already know so if we type in a word literally and set this to a font where we can demo this let's make it nice and big this anti-aliasing feature allows us to smoothen out the edges of our type now you see when I put it to none which means it's turned off we get these really rough jagged edges whereas if we put it onto smooth Photoshop actually renders and works out how it can soften up and crisp up the edges and it just makes them a whole lot smoother so you've got smooth strong crisp sharp and then none and there is a big big difference so generally you're going to want that on any of these four options depending on the document you're working on whether it's a print for example when you type in the text box to commit if you press enter on the numpad or you can click the move tool or you can click one of these two options up here so this one on the left would cancel any current edits this one on the right would commit any current edits and it just closes off locks the box off then you've got alignment so you can align it right center and left color options you can change it to red for example and you've got the ability to warp which we'll talk through shortly so that is the type tool in its very very basics there's also a vertical type tool so let's just jump to that if we want to jump to it quickly we could press shift T and this is more for um, oriental languages and perhaps just where you want to experiment with typography so if we open up this panel here this is the paragraph panel it's got a P on the palette here and this is the character one which is represented by a letter A so we'll just organize those into their own little section starting with the character one basically it's a replication of the above except this time it's got a little bit more information a little, few more settings and things like that let's just show you how these work first off we've got the font face which is fine then we've got style over on the right because of the font we're using we don't currently have a, a style option so if we just put it on Helvetica which is down here they're all organized alphabetically we can set the style any number of these these are all native fonts within this typeface so this oblique is a genuine oblique for the Helvetica typeface then below that we have the sizing so again you can just resize by if you hover over the T icon and drag left to right note that your mouse changes to a hand with some arrows under its finger or you can you can select from any of these presets or alternatively you can simply just type in a, a digit that you want it to change to it's in points but you can also change it to pixels and the maximum supported is 1296 points 
So we'll just undo that and then we'll look at leading. So you'll notice this paragraph we created quite blown out. The, the line height is quite extreme and that is what is known as the leading or line height. So in order to change that again, click on the icon, drag left to right. You can enter an automatic setting. So this is the default line height for that font. And also you can use one of the drop down menus. And then there is kerning. Kerning is a way of manually changing the spacing between two characters. And sometimes you'll need to do this because the fonts are rendered automatically. Sometimes, particularly on capitals, you'll notice that spacing between elements is very slightly out or is actually appears to be out when it isn't. For example, or on an A character, this gap here is very different to the gap here. So kerning is just a way of being able to pull the two back together. So you can change it to a minus number or you can have it at zero, which is default. Uh, and you can change the measurement of that. And then tracking over here, you can change the spacing between all the characters within your text. So if we zoom out again, and let's undo all the changes we just made. We click onto this box and we put the tracking to, let's just keep going with it. Let's just keep extending, extending, extending. And you'll notice that our letters are all widely spaced apart now. So that's part of tracking. Below that, we've got the width and height of uh, our text. So we can vertically scale and horizontally scale the text, but really this just kind of distorts it. So it's not a brilliant saying, not something that you're gonna really need to use because it just distorts text and makes it look rather amateur. And then below that, you've got the baseline shift and color option again. So if you just click on that, you can change the color of your text. Baseline shift, very, very simple. All you need to do is if you click onto a text layer and then you want to place a word higher up, but have it still part of the same text document or text box, you can just change this. And now if I type in, oh, this is, whoa, this has gone high. Um, let's put that to super baseline like so that is still part of the same text document and we can still change that but we've shifted the baseline so that's just a way of being able to reposition elements perhaps if you want to do a singular line across the uh, top of a monitor you could have the word right up at the top in different fonts different sizes but still part of the same text box and then belong along the bottom you've got four bold four italic these are interesting settings because sometimes fonts don't have a uh, native bold. You can actually make Photoshop pretend they are, which is pretty good at doing, but sometimes it can cause a couple of bugs and errors and it might not render too well. And then pressing italic does the same thing, does a pretend italic. We've also got a capitals option, which changes all your text to capitals. And if you turn that off, it resets them. We've got the ability to capitalize the start of each word but also set the rest of them to small caps then you've got subscript and superscript which you'll see in things like um, the names of elements if we change that to h2o or superscript just puts it smaller and above the baseline and then finally you've got underline which you should probably know what that does and we've also got strike through, which, as the name says on the tin, puts a strike through the text. So that's a number of options we've got there. Again, we've got repeats of the anti-alias options and also the language we're typing in. Then on the paragraph box, we've got a couple more options. We've got the ability to indent text. So, for example, let's say you wanted to put a picture within this paragraph. You can indent the text by using these options. This is going to indent the left margin. This is going to do the first line, and this is going to add space before the paragraph, whilst this one will add space afterwards. So if we do the left margin one, it should move them all, hopefully, across. So let's do the left margin, and yes it is. And we can again just use this to drag the option out. Alternatively, we can do the first line. 
like so. Let's just separate those out so we can do that separately. So now that one's moving independently of these because they were all one word technically that's why they were all moving as one. So that's just something you want to look out for sometimes. So you can move the indentation of different words which is good if you want to position your text around pictures and such. And also we can set hyphenation on or off. Let me show you what that does. If we press hyphenate you'll notice now it's putting a little dash in automatically for us at the end of each line rather than just putting the word onto another line like it was doing before. Sometimes it's handy if, if you're creating long rolls of text but some people don't like it so it's up to you. And then you've got more alignment options. You've got the standard three left, center and right justification and then you've got justify left which will if we uh, write in a proper sentence this is a proper sentence and then space that properly this will align them against the right margins and the left margins but the last sentence will default to the left but you notice you start to see these little gaps appearing so that's something you want to be aware of we can centrally justify them so again all the same apart from this last line is in the center and we can write justify so again same thing but this is on the right margin and then we can do a full justification which is okay providing your last sentence hasn't got four words on and ends up looking like that now we have talked about shapes and you can use text with photoshop shapes so let's go ahead and create a circle we can actually apply text to our circle we can put it inside outside uh, have it in the center of the text so let's just show you how to do that draw a circle using your shape tool and if you notice the cursor changes from normal cursor to one with a squiggly line through to one in brackets so let's show you what this one does depending where you click it's going to actually create text on the outside of this circle so this is text on the outside and we can't keep going because it will just bump into that one but we can also drag this one onto the inside of the circle by clicking onto the direct selection tool or the path selection tool sorry clicking onto it and you notice the cursor has changed again we got one with a an arrow and we can then drag it inside or outside of the circle and we can also shift the start of our sentence by dragging round the circle we've got another indicator here so we can actually shift that one round or pop it on the inside of the circle like so we can type within the circle so let's just delete that like that click onto the circle and then now this is text wrapped inside the circle and you can see it does a pretty decent job all the alignment things and uh, text features that we've just talked about all work so if we keep going you can see that uh, we can align it within the circle still we can do all kinds of cool stuff with that now you can use that technique to draw long paths and one final thing we're going to show you or two final things we're going to warp some text so this is text warped so let's make that a little bit bigger there we go and if we click back onto the edit mode so just clicking onto our text you see this looks a bit like a sad face click onto that and it says warp text now we've got loads of different options and we don't really have time to go through them all so practice and experiment with with them all these icons are pretty good representations of what they do so if we just put on flag we can change the amount of bend and the horizontal distortion of the characters and the vertical distortion to a point where it's almost unreadable hit ok and you can see we've been able to distort our text now that is still completely editable so this has been edited so it's a very good tool very cool you can create some really nice features out of that and then one final one if we just type in the following sentence this sentence is misspelled or misspelt hard to misspell on purpose do that and if we go to edit and check spelling we can open up a spell checker which is very handy and that will follow along with the language you have selected here so what have we learned in today's lesson? Well, we've looked how to create paragraph text and a free-flowing text layer, so the one that 
doesn't have an end. We've looked at the character and paragraph panels. We've considered using text on paths and shapes, and we've shown you how to do spell checking text in Photoshop. Now your task for this lesson is to create a layout with the following. A menu with six menu items, so using a free flowing text layer will be useful for that. And then two columns of text underneath, so you'd use the paragraph for that. And really what you're doing is making a very, very simple mock web page. Next time on 30 Days to Learn Photoshop, we'll be looking at the pen tool. Thanks for listening.